Now, this is something very, very important. Uh, often in the posterior triangle, uh, there is a very, very prominent vein, uh, virtually subcutaneous in location. Um, it runs down from, say, along the lower border of the neck, down lower border of the mandible, down towards the clavicle. This is not the normal size. This is actually an enlarged vein. This is an enlarged um, external jugular vein. I repeat, external jugular vein. It's a subcutaneous vein. Almost end to end, it is underneath the uh, skin. So that's, that there are a lot of clinical points associated. We will discuss this one by one. So the red arrow points to the great uh, to the um, external jugular vein. The yellow arrow, on the other hand, is the uh, surface uh, uh, landmark, namely the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Uh, next, the we will try to identify that vein which I showed you in the clinical photograph earlier, a large vein. But here it's it's a, the normal size of the vein is this much. You can see that is the retromandibular vein dividing that's the vein dividing into uh, an anterior and a posterior division now this vein coming from the angle of the uh, eye is the facial vein now the anterior division of the retromandibular vein joins the facial vein to form the common facial vein then the posterior division of the retromandibular joins the posterior auricular and forms the external jugular vein. I repeat, forms the external jugular vein. Now, that's how that vein, uh, what you saw in the previous slide, can be explained in the dissection. Now, this is from another specimen. But notice that this vein is unusually large. Now, that, now that justifies the size of the um, swelling you saw in the uh, clinical photograph. Obviously, there is something wrong. There is some pathology with this vein. The pathology may not be with the vein itself. Uh, usually, these veins are dilated secondary to uh, a pathology in the heart. Let us say uh, there is a um, tricuspid stenosis. I'm just giving as an example. Immediately above the tricuspid valve is the right uh, atrium. Now that right atrium, there will be uh, stagnation, you know, relative uh, slowdown in the uh, pumping of blood in across the tricuspid. As a result, what happens? Pooling of blood, uh, relative pooling is extended backwards and all the structures, the SVC, the brachiocephalic veins, and then further up, the external jugular vein, then all these veins will be uh, correspondingly uh, dilated depending upon the degree of lesion in the heart. In fact, it is, it is one of the prominent features of congestive cardiac right-sided failure. You see, that's the enlarged external jugular vein, I repeat. That is the enlarged external jugular vein. Next, in addition to all this, it is incomplete if we miss out the lymph nodes of this triangle. There are a number of lymph nodes in this triangle. They are very, very important because in principle, they drain more or less a huge area of the scalp, fascia, facial skin and almost the entire uh, deep structures of the head and neck region. And also, uh, I'll give you a little more details. They are important because their location and their uh, presence is important because there are times when secondary to metastasis in the lymph nodes, uh, these, uh, the primary may be anywhere in the abdomen, say for example, um, the stomach, the ovary or, or any other abdominal organ or it could be a local um, head and neck tumor from where secondaries have gone into the lymph nodes say for example in adenocarcinoma 
then radical dissection of these lymph nodes is one of the well known procedures as a part of the treatment for which uh, we need to classify the lymph nodes of this area the lymph nodes of the posterior triangle are grouped under level 5 nodes surgical classification they are known as level 5 <coughs> nodes now these nodes level 5 is further classified into an upper group and a lower group the plane of division is is at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage i repeat the lower border of the cricoid cartilage that's the plane of division that means the area of the posterior triangle above this plane is the phi a roughly the territory of spinal accessory group of lymph nodes i am not referring to the nerve i am referring to a cluster of lymph nodes along the nerve likewise phi b is below the um, plane of the cricoid cartilage and uh, it is uh, roughly corresponds to the transverse cervical and suprascapular supraclavicular uh, nodes that means the cluster of nodes that accompany these nerves are in the vicinity of these nerves besides this the lymph nodes can be involved in various other pathologies notable amongst which in a tropical country like india is tuberculosis i repeat tuberculous uh, lymphadenitis is quite commonly seen in clinical practice even today next more important some more importantly particularly on the left side uh, there there could be uh, these nodes could be uh, what what i would say is um, uh, a, a cluster of nodes which uh, are enlarged and uh, uh, they may be pathognomonic of uh, uh, secondaries where the primary is usually in the abdomen as i mentioned stomach or any other abdominal organ uh, and these when you palpate these nodes usually we do the palpation from behind when you palpate these nodes they are uh, non tender nodes these nodes which are pathognomonic of uh, um, yeah yeah primary tumor elsewhere in the body they are known as the virtuous nodes then this sign that that classifies them as non-tender clearly palpable nodes uh, is the troitious sign now that's the virtuous nodes take a look at this this is yet another specimen i'm just recap here the phrenic nerve and the scalenus anterior are well seen next the scalenus medius is behind and the upper trunk of the brachial plexus is also uh, clearly visible there is nothing much it's a repetition but in a different slide now that's the herbs point the suprascapular nerve can be seen emerging from the upper part of the herbs point and running posteriorly and laterally uh, towards the uh, edge of the scapula upper edge of the scapula there along with the corresponding artery it, it goes um, to supply the supraspinatus and then the infraspinatus i repeat right below the middle trunk of the brachial plexus is, is also well seen in this specimen now this here i have removed the um, inferior belly of the omohyoid but this is yet another specimen um, where you just for the sake of orientation because it's a different specimen there may be a little lack of orientation let me recap some important features by which you can identify the right right neck you see clavicle at the back right now don't worry about that circle flashing circle that's the larynx and the trachea so that gives you an orientation the upper part is the 
uh, head region the lower part is the thoracic ring going down and that area marked by the circle is the area of the um, lower part of the posterior triangle i have removed the um, inferior belly of the omoid so i really can't say strictly it is subclavian triangle it is a subclavian triangle plus a large part of the occipital triangle next you see the scalenus anterior has been cut uh, to show uh, a few deeper structures next that area i have enlarged that area marked by the circle you can see again the scalenus anterior now that is the subclavian artery that is the subclavian artery because of its relation to the scalenus anterior the scalenus anterior is anterior to the second part of the subclavian artery therefore the artery is divided into part 1 part 2 and part 3 this is very vividly brings out that remember the scalenus anterior has been cut next upper trunk of the brachial plexus middle trunk of the brachial plexus and much lower down there the lower trunk of the brachial plexus all the three trunks are clearly seen as they emerge uh, from behind the lateral border of the scalenus medius in other words between the scalenus medius and the uh, scalenus anterior now again um this artery as it comes uh, into relation with the scalenus anterior particularly its second part right, lies on the first rib upper surface of the first rib this is a very important clinical point because in the event of any major bleeding of the uh, area distal to the artery lateral to the artery particularly axillary artery and limb upper limb gentle pressure on the subclavian artery press it against the first rib it will block the artery and it will reduce the bleeding considerably in the areas distal to it it will not completely stop because there are a lot of collateral uh, circulation and anastomosis particularly the uh, scapular anastomosis but nevertheless it will bring a significant reduction in bleeding now that's the suprascapular nerve emerging from the herbs point now that's the suprascapular artery going downwards and laterally uh, sorry going uh, backwards and laterally to join the suprascapular nerve then the vein that i have kept pending in the discussion all along is the subclavian vein it is right in front of the subclavian artery particularly at the region of the scalenus anterior it is anterior to the scalenus anterior whereas the artery is behind the subclavian vein is in front this is very important because the artery as it comes out behind the uh, scalenus anterior takes a sheath of the prevertebral fascia along with it laterally towards the axillary artery but the vein is not behind the scalenus anterior it it escapes this prevertebral fascia therefore it is not constrained uh, by any limitations and it is free to expand in the event of uh, uh, any pooling above blood but then that is one thing second it is reasonably superficial remember right behind the uh, medial side, end of the clavicle you can uh, tap the artery uh, tap the vein as a result it is a vessel of choice for central venous access i repeat vessel of choice for central venous access now this is same the the lower part of the posterior triangle in particular the subclavian triangle but it is on the opposite side that is left side and i again i'm going to give you a focus on the circled area now you see clavicle just to orient yourselves next trapezius that's a posterior board next 
sternocleidomastoid anterior border of the posterior triangle remember the sternocleidomastoid has been cut in the uh, lower part and uh, you see that area marked by the circle i have enlarged now again the scalenus anterior muscle we will try to recall because that is a key muscle uh, and the subclavian artery is behind it the second part of the subclavian i mean so therefore medial to the scalenus anterior you will see the first part of the subclavian artery by the by scalenus anterior itself was identified because of the phrenic nerve in front of it as I already told you next that's the upper trunk of the brachial plexus middle trunk of the brachial plexus next now see that is a subclavian artery first part it runs laterally goes behind the scalenus anterior that form the second part at which stage it is right above the upper surface of the first rib next as it runs in the first part of the subclavian superiorly it gives a short stem that is the thyrocervical trunk i repeat that is the thyrocervical trunk one of the branches of the thyrocervical trunk is that we will name it now we have seen it earlier that's the suprascapular artery very well seen in the posterior triangle subclavian triangle now that's the internal jugular vein uh, that's that appears because the sternocleidomastoid has been cut otherwise it, it doesn't come in this triangle now you see i am enlarging that area because in the previous in the photograph there is a dull dark area where the thyrocervical trunk was not visible now you can see the thyrocervical trunk very prominently that blue arrow is a thyrocervical trunk next you see that is the suprascapular artery coming as one of the branches of the thyrocervical trunk next the suprascapular nerve can, can also be seen uh, just above the upper trunk of the brachial plexus right above the uh, herbs point now as i have repeatedly been telling you no discussion of any component of the human body gross anatomy is complete until and unless we also take note of a few imaging modalities the anatomy of uh, imaging modalities now here is a ct scan axial section that is horizontal section that's the muscle sternocleidomastoid that's the thyroid cartilage that will give you a rough estimate of the level at which we are trapezius posteriorly and now watch carefully connecting the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid with the anterior border of the trapezius you can see a thin white line now that white line is the investing layer of deep cervical fascia i repeat that the investing layer of deep cervical fascia next a few more interesting points which you can identify in this cross section here let's try to understand the level um see you can see the vertebra you can see the trachea in front you can see between the body of the vertebra and the trachea the esophagus watch carefully one by one what i show you trapezius muscle that's the prevertebral fascia i repeat that's the prevertebral fascia now that red arrow concentrate on it that area suggests one of the cervical nerves most probably c5 emerging out through the intervertebral foramen remember there is no bone there there is a gap that is the white shadow uh, in front is the body and uh, posterolaterally is the transverse process and in between there is a gap now that gap is nothing but the intervertebral foramen you can see a white or a slightly whitish gray area that's the uh, cervical nerve emerging through the intervertebral you can see it on both sides the yellow arrow is on the posterior aspect refers to the spine thoracic spine tip of the spine where the prevertebral fascia and the um, investing layer of deep 
both the layers fuse and join the are attached to the um, ligamentum nuke and the um, tip of the spine next anteriorly you can see the sternocleidomastoid that is the uh, posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid now remember because the narrow that you, you identified here let's say this is c5 as it comes out it has to go and for, form the uh, brachial plexus it has to come out of this area as it comes out you can see the prevertebral muscles are there and beyond that that is uh, the scalenus anterior and the medius in between it comes out as it comes out it carries a sheath of the prevertebral fascia laterally now that's the importance the, see the, remember one thing these fascia can bind surgical spaces if there is a pus or uh, a, a bleed uh, surely these uh, spaces will be limited because of these facial attachments so it is not likely that um, any uh, mass occupying uh, lesion will go beyond this fascia into the axilla that's a very important point here instead it may go into a retropharyngeal space or it may go down into the media stem. these are the other possibilities we could uh, consider now that was an overview of the posterior triangle uh, it has been rather extensive um, and there are a lot of important clinical points which i have highlighted then and there from time to time i hope uh, you have benefited from this discussion uh, wish you all the best my dear students